This 26 Sports and CCTV High School Football presentation is brought to you by Wolverine Power Cooperative and Great Lakes Energy. Your local electric cooperative is looking out for you. And by Munson Healthcare Cadillac Rehab Services. And here we go with a big third and goal play here for Morley. They come out with a different look out of the quarter uh, break. But similar action, just a keeper up the middle, and McBain was ready for it. Oh, yeah. Good to have you back, everybody, here on 26 Sports and CCTV. Just the start of the second quarter. Dan Gusser here, and alongside me up in the booth is uh, Jim Frito. Who got that tackle? Was that Owen Bonico there, Jim? I believe so. The, uh, the interior of our defensive line uh, stood the QB up, and uh, I don't think he gained much if he gained anything. Looks like uh, the Mohawks have brought out the, uh, the it's not called a T, but it is a field goal attempt. You see Trevor Underhill getting ready to hold that. He's also the quarterback, so we'll see if this is towed or not. It is towed. That's a heck of a kick. Yeah. That was. Field goal is good. Wow. Kick by number four. That's by number four. Alvaro Orjas. Al, as he's affectionately known down there. Well, he got a lot of height on that kick, too. Yeah. It had some distance. He, he could have stepped back a few yards. And yeah, if, if I remember my conversation with uh, uh, athletic director down at Morley, Al is uh, a foreign exchange student. So that gets us the first score of the game, 3 nothing. Morley Stanwood. My pencil just died. I was going to write myself a little note that uh, Al Orris got that, uh, oh, about a nine-yard field goal, Jim. Is that yep. what you say? I think it was about that. Okay. And he, it looks like he's doing the kicking duty here, too. Yep. Cade Brown back for the Ramblers. McBain's moving a few people up on the front line, changing them around here a little bit. And uh, we'll get ready for this uh, kickoff. See if uh, McBain can uh, uh, move the ball down the field and get onto that score scoreboard. Nice high short kick. That's going to be fielded by uh, Camphouse. Lowers his head. Good hard running. Looks like number 13 on that tackle. Nope. McBain's going to have great field position. Dillery, number 20 on that tackle. Anytime you can start past the 30 in high school football, that's good field position. We'll take it. 36 is great. Rodenbaugh goes in motion. Sealand keeps it. Starts right and makes a nice cut back to the left and up the middle, Jimmy. Boy, oh, yeah, he was tough. He lowered his shoulder and bought himself about six extra yards on that. Great uh, run. Good hard running at the end of that. So, Jim, uh, what are your two boys up to these days? Yeah, they're... Uh, Austin and uh, Ev. They're uh, going to be watching football this weekend, I'm sure. Austin's going to be watching it from Denver. And Ev's going to be watching it from uh, our living room in Cadillac. All right. Ev's a student down at CMU coming home for the weekend then? Yep. He just got home tonight, and I think he's going to try to sneak a quick nine holes in uh, yet this evening. Good to see a, a Chippewa coming up to uh, your house, Jim. I know you're <laughs> a, a WMU Western Michigan University Bronco grad, <laughs> so I like to rub it into you. We, we had a penalty on that play, Ooh. so that motion um, to start that play. Pushes McBain back five from the line of scrimmage. Another, uh, what I would say is a big mistake, big penalty here oh, for yeah. McBain. They kind of shot themselves in the foot a little bit here in the first quarter and early on here in the second. Yeah, they have it that, their first drive. Pistol formation this time. For, you know, yeah. Nice tackle in there is number 35. Number 35, Logan Van Den Boss with that carry. Tackle. Number 75, Bryce 75 with the tackle, Bryce Callen. 
Bryce, a good good sized kid looking from up here, Jim. Yeah, uh, he is. Yeah. I wouldn't want to have to uh, beat him to the table for dinner. <laughs> McVeigh goes back to that two receivers each side, that pistol look. Motion is Camphouse. Elin keeps it, comes this way. Oh, he's got a oh, receiver yeah. wide pass. open right there. I think that's uh, Logan Rodenbaugh. And that'll uh, get that big play first down for McVeigh. That was a great pass. A lot of poise by our quarterback. Made a great play on that. Big gainer. Yeah. So, McBain's looking to the sideline, getting a play, signal in. And they go uh, back to a very similar look we've seen most of the season here for them. Quick toss right there outside. That's for Burke most, and uh, he needed all that 6-4 frame to get that one. He's oh, got yeah. great hands. Oh, yeah, he sure did. He just went right up and got it, and he had the sun in his eyes too. Great great yeah. catch. Sun in his eyes, 8-yard gain. And uh, do we have a flag on the play, Jim? No, I think we do oh, as we boy. see officials talking about this one. This might be more of a procedure play, maybe uh, somebody not quite lined up. I didn't see anything. We want to let everybody know who our sponsors are. Jim, you want to read those off for us right there again, please? Our presenting sponsor is? Oh, Munson Healthcare, Cadillac Hospital, Wolverine Power, Cooperative and Great Lakes Energy, Fox Motors of Cadillac, Cadillac Tire, LC Materials, McBain Family Pharmacy, and Pizza Plus. And if you're out there watching tonight and you want to join that sponsor list, if you want to give the station a phone call, at 577-1844-1844. Uh, give them a shout. We'll get you on that. We've got uh, two trucks going most every uh, football weekend, starting all, all be Fridays pretty much now uh, next weekend. And uh, some of our volleyball action started up. And then in the winter here at 26 Sports and CCTV, we cover uh, girls and boys basketball both along with uh, high school hockey. So we'd love to have a few more. Sponsors uh, in on that. Well, that was tough after a, a after a nice run by the quarterback Sealand on that last play. This play uh, got stuffed by the left side of the D line for Morley. We're also going to let everybody know that you can order DVDs of uh, tonight's game or box sets so you can catch all our McBain game coverages along with Manton games, Cadillac games, music, and Lake City. And I'll give you that information. Uh, Right after this play, everybody. Third and a couple, sealing back in that shotgun. Rolls to his left. Rodenbaugh almost makes the fantastic catch. Nice coverage right there by Tucker Cook. Great so, coverage. Oh, go ahead, Jim. Great coverage. Uh, pass was a little high, but boy, he had uh, the ends uh, crashing in on him. Uh, that would have been a great catch had he come down with it. So if you are interested in any of that DVD, Stuff that we mentioned a moment ago, you can uh, contact cctv-cadillac.org or you can check the website mynews26.com. These DVDs make great uh, stocking stuffers for upcoming holidays. Uh, for any of our, our senior athletes out there, um, you know, kind of a nice graduation present. You know, something that uh, 40 years from now they can show to grandkids and say, hey, that was me back when. And the DVDs, uh, they help off support some of the cost of our equipment and our our, our students uh, that come out here to uh, do some things behind the scenes uh, with the cameras and truck. Um, our sports here are produced with the cooperation between the Wexford Masaki Career Tech Center, CCTV, and My News 26. So we get a lot of kids out of the CCTV program up in Cadillac, Jim, where all the area schools send students into the broadcasting uh, program if that's what they want to do. And you know, if you're out there watching in, in your high school and you uh, want to join our crew, even if it's for the winter sports season, get a hold of your counselors. Come work with us. Right. Morley's turn with the ball, Jim. Yeah, boy, that was close. Missed it by less than a yard on that last fourth down. Huge tackle Huge right there. Tackle. Yeah. Noah Hendrickson with that. 
what, maybe a five-yard loss, Jim? Yeah, I'd say about that. That was great penetration. They may have had a stunt down on that right side of the D-line. Second and 15 here. You know, very low scoring game here. Three nothing Morley. Uh, same uh, same, same recipe right there. Hendrickson Absolutely. blows up that play too. Yeah, he, he just came in there like a rocket. Created havoc in the backfield. That's what you want out of senior leadership. You know, you're uh, struggling a little bit here at home. Coming off of a tough loss last week, and this game isn't going the way you want, you just uh, take over. Absolutely. So that'll bring up third and, oh, maybe 19 here. Third and forever. We'll see what Morley chooses to do here. We'll see if uh, Underhill drops back. And he does not as he just does a uh, quarterback draw. He uh, looks like he tried to take it over the left side there, uh, over the left guard, left tackle hole there, and uh, odd kneeling with that tackle, Jim. Yeah, that was there was no room there. That was a heck of a stand by the McMain Rambler defense right there. So here we get to the punting situation. Back deep for uh, McBain is Garrett Ververkmos, and punting is number. Uh, 22, Drew Jensen. Nice punt. That's going to be down by number 24. That's Jason Bielik. And uh, once again, we get a chance to look at the McBain offense. Well, they've got great field position starting this drive. Uh, just shy of the 40-yard line. Uh, this is a great spot for them. Very similar to their last possession where they started. Let's see if we can get a little drive going here. So as McBain gets up to the ball, Gavin Seelan, quarterback, motion goes Van and Boss, and they are looking towards him, and he is open. Number 35 right there, Logan Van and Boss with a nice catch, and uh, I'm not sure who uh, the tackler was for Morley, but I think Van and Boss won the battle. Oh, yeah, quick uh, quick 11 yards. That was a great play. He was wide open. I think that play is open all day. I think they marked it short of the first down. They're calling it second down. Nope, now they're there moving they the sticks. That's one of the things with that McBain offense. you got to wait until the chains move before you are allowed to run this play. And a quick pitch right there. I tell you what, if uh, you're Morley's coaching staff, you uh, you got to want to pat yourself on the back for that tackle right there made by number 24, Jason Bielek. Just solid fundamentals, head up, didn't go for anything, and made a great open field tackle. Yeah, he sure did. Came up, read the play. That's stuff you work on, you know, early on in the preseason, and uh, it paid off. Read option for Sealand, and he's going to pick up about four to five yards. Vanden Boss is coming in here for McBain, along with number one, Trevor Underhill for Morley. That was a big play there. That guard pulled and opened up the uh, that hole on the left side, had a lot of room. Deflected in there by number 44. Alex Jensen breaks that play up. We want to let folks at home know if you're watching this game tonight, uh, here Thursday night, it will be rebroadcast this Saturday at 4 o'clock here on uh, 26 Sports and CCTV. That's on uh, Charter Cable Channel 13. And anytime you want, you can always go online to mynews26.com and stream any of the broadcasts that we do. So we got a timeout by McBain here, Jim. What do the Ramblers got to do to, to kind of get things going? They're just kind of sputtering. Well, I tell you, that last pass, we had a man open, but uh, it was a little bit low and got deflected by one of the linebackers, uh, but it was there. And I think we're close to uh, being able to some of these quick passes, you know, for the seven, eight-yard gains. Um, I think they're open all day, and we've been successful. And when we've, uh, when the drive stalled, is when there's been just something uh, a mistake like that. 
But give Morley credit. You know, they read it. They had their linebackers drop back, got in the, in the lane, and that was it. Just knocked it down. But Okay, so we've got still the timeout going on here. Um, you know, we're seeing from McBain a lot of, a lot of Gavin Sealand. Um, we found Vanderboss. We haven't really seen him look much for Verberkmos. One pass, I remember him stretching that frame, and we haven't seen him look yet over to uh, Barton. Eric Barton, number 80, or excuse me, Ethan Barton. So we'll see what they do here. So Ethan Barton has come in, or has in again, and he is right in front of the coaching staff there. And Verberkmos is off to the other side along with uh, Justin Camp, house number two. We'll see what McGain does on this fourth down play. They are going to the other side towards Verberkmos. Sealand's going to keep it. He's got the first down, Jim. Boy, he's fast. That was a great play. You know, that's one of those. Yardage. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, he just picked up big yardage. That was huge. He made his mind up early on that he had uh, the daylight enough to get to that first down, and that's a smart play as a senior. Yep. You know, maybe you get the touchdown out of it if you hold on to it a second or two, but you just don't know. And if you can see the daylight to get that first down, go get it. You know, our receivers have a height advantage uh, on their secondary. Sealand uh -oh. uh, fumbles that one. Uh -oh. That was an exchange. Uh, between the quarterback and the dive back that uh, I think it looked like it went off Vandenboss' arm, but McBain is able to recover it. Monaco with that uh, recovery on that one. I think that was uh, the younger Monaco, Brandt, the freshman, number 57, with that recovery. We caught a break there. And here we go. Sealand fakes that handoff, follows his blocker. Oh, that was a slow play to develop. A little bit of a counter almost. Yep. Just a slow counter. Yep. I think a little bit of a blow up there by number 64. He didn't get the tackle right there, Logan Griffiths, but I think he blew the blocking of McBain back into that play. That's going to bring up a long third down, Jim. Yep. I'll tell you, we've got the height advantage on their, on their secondary. And Sealand's got a pretty strong arm, so we'll see what they choose to do here. Looked like McVeigh left early. Yeah, it sure did. Oh, he stepped out, but he was past the, past the first grip down. Oh, and there's a late, late flag. Hit. I think we got a little bit of a late push out of bounds or after he was out of bounds over there on Morley. That'll add 15 yards to that play. How about the play by Sealand? That was a great play. Get somebody in his grill as uh, he was stepping back. A lot of poise on that throw. We hope everybody has a good, safe uh, Labor Day weekend here. And certainly anybody watching, uh, you know, if you've had issues with all the storm damage, uh, glad everybody from at least what I hear has uh, been safe. Very little injury, a lot of property damage, though, and uh, hopefully oh, yeah. that everything works out for you guys as you get things fixed up, yards cleaned up, all that stuff. Uh, your heart goes out for those folks who had some major structural damage from that storm. Saw a lot of trees on a lot of houses. Yeah. It was awful. I took a look over at the, the Lakewood on the green area, uh, a golf course run over there by a good friend of ours, Steve Nelson, and, and a lot of the community homes over there, a lot of damage. So about a two-yard gain right there. Roadball with that carry. Not a lot of room over the left tackle. Tried to make something out of nothing, but his uh, tailback was covered, so had he pitched, he'd have lost yards. McBain's first trip into the red zone here. Um, as the shadow's really starting to show up onto the field right now. The lights are not on, but I anticipate them going on pretty soon here. Second and maybe eight, eight and a half. Rodenbaugh, hands off. Nope, he keeps it. Number 20, Daniel Rodenbaugh, 
Gets a couple more. That's that read option the other side this time. So you went read left, read right. What are you going to do this time, Jim? What would you call? I, I think I would look down the middle on a pass. They got third, third and about six, uh, seven. We saw McBain last week slip uh, Vandenboss off the fake handoff up the middle and find him a few times um, for some nice gains. And that's kind of what I think you're talking about here. Nope. Sorry. Rodenbach keeps it. He breaks a good oh. tackle right there. He's going to score, oh, yeah. Jim. Garrett Verberkmos. Nope, not Verberkmos. Excuse me. That's 88 out there. Ethan Barton leading away with some nice blocking. That was huge. That sprung him. Rodenbach with about an eight-yard scamper there, Jim, for a touchdown. And that'll make the score 6-3 with 2.35 to go. McBain quickly lines up for two. And we'll get a replay, I think, after the extra point of that. Oh, bad snap. Yep. And I think we're going to go to replay right here with the score. McBain 6 and Morley 3. All righty, and you can see him get into the end zone on that. Nice job and a good job of blocking out there again by uh, Barton. That was a great run. 6-3 late here in the second quarter, almost halftime with 2.35 to go. We want to let everybody know that uh, Jim and I will be back after the quarter. We'll do a little bit of a recap at halftime as uh, you check out some of the sponsors on commercials get to the fridge and our, the cupboard for some snacks. <laughs> and then uh, we'll come back after that with some third quarter action. Um, next week, our two trucks are heading out. Uh, actually, we only have one out next week, and that is the Lake City coming over here to McBain. This is our third week in a row, uh, our third home game in a row for McBain, September 7th. That'll be a Friday nighter. So back deep for Morley Stanwood is number 22. That's just what I would have expected, and that's Jace, or Drew Jensen back there. And uh, probably Noah Henderson, number 44, kicking off for McBain. Is that who's kicking? I can't see, Jim. Can you? I think no, so. George Maybe. Brown. That's George oh. Brown. Yep, oh. I got that wrong. George has been kicking off for a couple of years now for McBain. He's got a heck of a foot. So he set, squibbed it. Yeah, he had the ball just kind of laying on the ground. Picked up right on the edge of the sideline right there. Uh, Callan Dil Dilry. I think uh, that's one of those ones where you're looking at it thinking, yeah, if it goes out of bounds, it's a penalty, but I think I can get a little bit. So with just a little bit more than two minutes to go, Morley's got a long field to go. Uh, we'll see if they open it up a little bit here. As, as vast majority of this first quarter action has been some uh, interior runs. That looks like uh, Underhill to Bielik handoff and a short carry. Owen Bonico with that tackle. Good defensive line play on that. Fill the gaps and stop the play. McBain's uh, defense looks pretty solid here tonight. Uh, I know uh, I, I would have thought that coming out of that Kingsley game, they kind of got pushed around a little bit as the game went on. There's a big play right here. Underhill with a, uh, about a 15-yard pass and then another 15-yard runs off the catch to Bielik. It's a big play right there. Got to give him credit. He had uh, McBain in his face when he made that toss, and it was uh, once caught, it was a good move to break free and pick up some big yards by yeah, Morley. And rolling to your left and throwing with your right isn't too easy. No, that's for sure. So big play right there. McBain, excuse me, Morley picks up about 30, 30. 30 plus yards on that, 146 to go. First and 10 from just outside the McBain 30 yard line. Underhill 
Underhill under center. He hands off on the dive. Looks like Vandenboss on that tackle along with uh, number eight, Auden Ealing. What do they get, Jim? Maybe five, five yards there? Yeah, I'd say so. He's a load. He gets up to ramming speed pretty fast. That play was blown up in the middle, and there's a loose ball. Vandenboss jumps on that. We had a great view of that. Did we get a replay? Well, looks like Ealing got that fumble recovery. That's a big play. That's a huge play. Um, and certainly with 116 to go and the wide open offense that McBain runs, they've got plenty of plenty of time to get down the field here. And all three timeouts, if I remember right, Jim. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, uh, boy, the middle of that field is open right now. Let's say drop. McBain goes. Back. Uh, Three receivers to the far side and uh, over on our side, 88 Ethan Barton all by himself. And he's going to run long. Ealing keeps it. No, nope, that's Rodenbaugh, number 20. I got to double check. Yeah, Daniel Rodenbaugh. He's the sophomore on that. Roden Ball with another uh, eight, nine yards, Jim. Oh, yeah. Big hole there. Yeah, he's, uh, I don't think we saw him at quarterback last week. We'll have to see if he uh, had an injury to Sealand here going on or just want to get some reps in for uh, for Roden Ball or you just want to kind of spark the team a little bit. You never know how or why a coach is going to make that decision. So, uh, just so everybody knows, um, once again, if you are interested in ordering any DVDs, um, you can get a box set of all our McBain coverages, which will be the first three games of the season here from McBain. Um, and I think, if I remember right, we have them later in the year as an away game. Nope, that's another home game. That'll be when Manton comes to town at the end of September. So you can get four games of coverage here of Rambler football, and all you need to do is uh, go to mynews26.com, cctv-catalog.org, or do a little phone call to the station there, and that number is 577-1844. So coming out of the first time out of the half, 43.1 seconds to go, and McBain's got to get 50, 55 yards. Daniel Roden by the sophomore with a oh, heave. That's Verberkmos' way. Oh, big play. That's what you see from Garrett Verberkmos. We saw that a lot last year. It's almost just throw it up and let my guy go get it. Yeah, he's got a, a height advantage out on that far cornerback out there, and he just he just out jumped him. Great catch. No flags on the play. That'll uh, give us a first down with 34.7 to go. And just like that, McBain is uh, to step up to the line. They're in uh, getting close to scoring territory. Boy, they sure are. Look like a Megatron out there uh, in the old Detroit Line days. <laughs> That's right. Throw it up and let him go get it. Rodenbaugh fakes the handoff to George Brown, keeps it. He's going to pick up five right there. Clock ticking and a uh, quick timeout by McBain, Jim. Well, they've got plenty of time. I mean, they can they can work it down there, and maybe they're going to try, uh, you know, a toss like that in the end zone. I think they'd have uh, a pretty good shot, but it looks like they need a few more yards before they they make that effort. It's only second down, so you know, getting the first down isn't going to be an issue. Really kind of what's hurt McBain so far in the half has been their own mistakes, yeah, you know, for whether sure. that's a big penalty or a, a turnover kind of thing. But their offense has been all right. Yeah, absolutely. 
I mean, our very first drive, we had the ball, we were moving it, and we turned it over. But uh, we can definitely, McBain can definitely move the ball on Morley. That's, uh, that's pretty evident. So at this point in the early in the year, you probably haven't worked on a lot of special plays or trick plays, if you want to call them. Um, more probably just a steady diet of getting your offense in, probably a few extra plays from last week, something that, uh, you know, the Mohawks hadn't seen on film. We'll see what McBain dials up here. So they got uh, three receivers right. Martin on this side. Rotenbaugh looks all over the field and then throws it into the end zone, and it's oh. dropped right at the end zone. Uh, I think uh, 32 there. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Xavier Raven uh, was thinking, I want to get some yards here, and was looking upfield because that was right in his belly. Oh, yeah. Third and uh, 10 for McBain. Rotenbaugh still at quarterback. As you see George Brown, the third. Swing to the far side of the field here. Rodenbaugh's going to keep it. He's going to get the first down, Jim, with some nifty running. Absolutely. And that'll probably get us to our next timeout with seven, just over seven seconds to go. And they well, are the not calling the timeout because they got time to get the chain moved. And they're just going to let Rodenbaugh set the play and go. There's the whistle signaling it. There's the snap, and he spikes it. Okay. I'm not sure what the flag is for on that. 2.4 to go. I have a feeling uh, somebody wouldn't set on the line. That could be. Did you see a signal from an official yet, Jim? I have not. Definitely against McBain is... Uh, they are going to mark it off. Five yarder. And it is a procedure penalty. So that'll uh, get us to the, probably the last play to half. Well, the middle of the field's open deep. Yep. They can send somebody down there on a slant. And it's off. Rodenbaugh throws it into the end zone. There's nobody there. Brought out. That's number 20 right now. That's Callan Dillery. And he's going to bring it out to about the 29-yard line, and that'll be the last play of the half. I don't see any flags there. Jim, do you? Nope, no flags on that. Okay, so that'll end the half here from McBain, Michigan, where the score is 6-3 at halftime. Uh, Jim and I, Dan Gusser here, we've uh, brought you the first half here on 26 Sports and CCTV. And we'll be back in just a moment with a little halftime wrap-up. <laughs> 